Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, do you believe that um, atheists and agnostics, uh, once they like choose that path or their point of view, um, do you believe that they can't be as moral as Christians? Oh no, Christ um, atheists, agnostics can be just as moral as anybody else. Um, the question isn't, can you, do you need God to be moral? Do you have to believe in God to be moral? No, there's atheists that are very moral. Um, the, the question is, can you justify morality without God? And that's the problem, right? It's not, can you act morally? Of course, atheists can act morally. The question is, can you justify what is moral without God? And I say, no, it's just your opinion if there's no God. But how? I mean, if you're, like, for me, I was raised in a family with, I, I would say, uh, not to sound conceited, but with very high morals. Um, okay. I respect um, yeah, everyone's good. point of views. I'm very open-minded. Good. Um, so uh, <laughs> how would that, how would God influence me to be more moral, even if, like, I think of myself and people tell me that I'm a decent and moral person? You see, acting moral and justifying morality are two different things. The Apostle Paul discussed this in Romans 2. In verse 14, he says, even Gentiles who do not have God's written law show that they know his law when they instinctively obey it, even without having heard it. Now, to better apply that verse, we can say something like even atheists who do not believe in God show they know God's written law when they instinctively obey it without having heard it. But why do I quote that verse? Well, let's listen to verse 15. They demonstrate that God's law is written in their hearts for their own conscience and thoughts either accuse them or tell them they are doing right. You see, when atheists say they don't need God to have morality, but then they treat others the way they want to be treated, they're demonstrating that God's law is written on their hearts because they're instinctively obeying the golden rule. You can't justify morality without God. Watch this kid try to do just that and get stuck in his fledgling worldview. Like for me, I was raised in a family with, I, I would say, uh, not to sound conceited, but with very high morals. Um, okay. I respect um, yeah, my good. point of view. I'm very open-minded. Good. Um, so, uh, <laughs> how would that, how would God influence me to be more moral, even if, like, I think of myself and people tell me that I'm a decent and moral person? Well, let's back up for a second and mm -hmm. ask the question, what is the purpose of life? Is the purpose of life to be moral? Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That's, uh, no, I wouldn't. Well, that's, <laughs> I guess I would say no, but. What is the purpose then? Um, to make the world a better place. That would be saying. then being moral. Why? Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, in a sense it would be. Um, so that our uh, children and grandchildren can leave. Who can cares? We're ultimately going to burn out one day. So what, what's the ultimate purpose? <laughs> so that we can live longer and humans can stay on the earth longer. So what? Ultimately, it's all going to, we're going to spin out. We're going we're gonna to heat death. Okay. So is there any ultimate purpose? There may be short-term purposes, but no ultimate purpose. Yeah, that's true. Okay, okay so. Yeah. In the very long term. Right, right. in the very long yeah, term, there's no okay. purpose. So why mm -hmm. even care about the short term then? Because I care about my children and grandchildren. Right, but so did Stalin. And that Stalin lived a great life for himself and his children and grandchildren by killing everybody around him and taking their stuff. Yeah, he's a bad person, so yeah. But <laughs> what do you mean by bad? He's killing other people. Why is that wrong? Because it's, it's, I mean, it's not good to kill other people. Why not? Because that's the, I mean, that's what most who people said? would say. Yeah, but who said? Um, Hitler said it was good to kill other people. Stalin most, said it was good to kill it. Why, why is that wrong? Why are they wrong? Because they, uh, they killed millions of people. And I know, but why is killing millions race. of people wrong if there's no God? Because, um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would just say because it's ruining the human race and it's... Um, right, but it presupposes yeah, so. that there's some value to human beings, right? Mm -hmm. It presupposes yeah, sure. that. Okay. I hate to break it to you, but if there is no God, there is no ultimate purpose. Now, people will say, well, our purpose is to propagate our species. 
That's why we're here. But if that's the purpose, that's not a moral mandate because we would just be existing like animals. And no one calls the bear <laughs> immoral when the bear devours a cub. We'd say that's nature. So if our purpose is to just simply propagate as a species, when another human kills a human, why do we call it murder? Why don't we say it's just nature? It's just one animal taking out another animal. If God does not exist, objective moral values do not exist. And here's why. Without some objective reference point, we have no way of saying that something is really up or down. God's nature provides an objective reference point for moral values. It's the standard against which all actions and decisions are measured. But if there's no God, there's no objective reference point. All we're left with is one person's viewpoint, which is no more valid than anyone else's viewpoint. This kind of morality is subjective, not objective. It's like a preference for strawberry ice cream. The preference is in the subject, not the object. So it doesn't apply to other people. In the same way, subjective morality applies only to the subject. It's not valid or binding for anyone else. So in a world without God, there can be no evil and no good, nothing but blind, pitiless indifference. God has expressed his moral nature to us as commands. These provide the basis for moral duties. For example, God's essential attribute of love is expressed in his command to love your neighbor as yourself. This command provides a foundation upon which we can affirm the objective goodness of generosity, self-sacrifice, and equality. For the atheist, humans are just accidents of nature highly evolved animals. But animals have no moral obligations to one another. When a cat kills a mouse, it hasn't done anything morally wrong. The cat's just being a cat. If God doesn't exist, we should view human behavior in the same way. No action should be considered morally right or wrong. But the problem is, good and bad, right and wrong, do exist. Just as our sense experience convinces us that the physical world is objectively real. Oh. Our moral experience convinces us that moral values are objectively real. And if we're ultimately going to die in the future, why is propagating our species important? Aren't we just delaying the inevitable? Aren't we going to all die anyway? And don't, don't say, oh, we're propagating our species to, to guarantee life or a better future for our children. Why is that morally right? Do our children have value? Why is it better to guarantee a better future versus guaranteeing a better now for us? Why would one be better than the other? The reality is, if there is no God, the inmates are running the asylum. See, one of the problems when you're trying to discover morality is there can be no morality without purpose. Uh, just a practical example. Uh, you can't say that uh, your quarterback throwing a touchdown is better than your quarterback throwing an interception unless you know what the purpose of the game is. Mm -hmm. And you can't know whether a particular action that we take in the real world is good or bad unless you know what the purpose of life is. If there is no purpose, there is no morality or clarity. I want to go back to what the kid said. He said, how could God help him be more moral than he already is? How would God influence me to be more moral, even if like, I think of myself and people tell me that I'm a decent and moral person? If he finds a relationship with God, he will discover that his morality, his works are like filthy rags. He will discover with a relationship with God that his works are woefully insufficient as it is to meet God's standard. God's standard is not just good works, it's perfection. And because the very question he asks is oozing with pride, he's already missed the mark. So he doesn't need God to make him more moral. He needs Jesus to pay his insurmountable debt, his sin, because the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I'm grateful that this kid asked Frank this question. Hopefully he listened to the response. It all points back to God.
But here is the ultimate purpose for man. Ecclesiastes 12 tells us the end of the matter, all has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty or purpose of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. That, my friends, is morality. If you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Like this video. I'll be back next week with another one. This is Pastor Frederick. This is about a book. Peace.